am opening Premiere Pro and I'm showing you guys how long it takes to open because it takes up a lot of room in the hard drive. So while you're opening it, you're going to see a pinwheel spinning around and I am going to put the SD card that we used for the last shoot that we did into the iMac. And that will be recognized right away. As you can see, if you can see that, the SD card has no name, which is fine. So while you're waiting for this to boot up, we're going to open up this card just to make sure there's something on it. Now, when you use the Canon camera, you're going to get these files. Um, now, one of my students already did this. This would usually say something else. Um, I think DSLR or something like that, or DCIM or something like that. Um, this was the biotech class, so my student labeled it biotech. So we're going to double click and make sure what's inside that file is DCIM right here. So DCIM and then go into 100 Canon and your file should be in there. <laughs> and of course, when you try to show somebody something, um, it's gone. So here's what I think happened and I remember it now. Um, we erased what was on that disc because the disc was full. Okay. So, what we're going to do, I was going to use the material on that disc to demonstrate basic editing, but we have other stuff, hopefully, that we can uh, use. So we're going to go into the McGlynn virtual tour. So this was a video that was sent to us by the principal of the McGlynn school. And there it is on the timeline. All right. And this is an already finished video that the principal wanted to cut down to not include certain things. So we're going to go as if that there's nothing here, because I want you guys to see um, how this works. So we're going to go to a um, new project. So the first thing you see on a new project was that other window with the list of the other projects that were edited here first. We're going to go into a new project. We're going to call this um, a sample project. Now, the most important thing to remember here is you want to save your project and all your clips in the same place. All right, so I'm going to make a folder by right clicking here, put a folder right here, and we're going to call that sample. And I'm going to double click it just so you guys can see that when I save this, it's going to go in there. All right. Now, if I click OK, I'm not really telling it where to go. But if I go to browse, I can go to desktop and then tell it where to go. Just press where it says sample and choose. And now when I press OK, we should see the purple icon up here inside. And there it is. So that's the project. All right, now if we had clips in here, they would go in the same place. If you make a habit of putting everything in the same place, you're not going to waste a lot of time looking for stuff. Some people, a very good friend of mine, um, save stuff all over the desktop, which is fine if you're alone and you're not sharing the computer with anybody, but it takes some minutes sometimes to look at the desktop when it's a big mess and find what you're doing. So it's really good to make a, a folder for each project that you do. And you'll know that in that folder, you'll find all your clips, all your assets, as they call them, stills, video, voiceovers, everything can go in here. Okay, so we're going to close this now that you know what's in there. Actually, I'm going to put this tour right in here. So we're going to make believe that this is raw footage that's unedited. Okay, so now we're going to close that we know where the clips are. 
And again, we're pretending that this wasn't done before. So we're gonna to go to new sequence. A sequence is just another name for timeline. So we're gonna call this version one. You can leave the name alone and just call it sequence one, sequence two. There's nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly fine. So I want you to notice, some of you have never edited before. Um, there are four windows. So in this window here, all right, this is called the viewer window. When you're playing a video that hasn't been edited, it's gonna show up in this space, okay? But it's also used for scopes and other stuff. Um, the audio mixer you can put in there. Okay, but right now just think of it as the place with a raw footage, they call that the viewer. Uh, in the viewers, your raw stuff that was never edited. This monitor here will be where your edited footage shows up and you can watch this, uh, we'll call that the program monitor, just like in, in the control room. And your finished product will be seen here. In this window is where your footage will be. So we're gonna go in this window, we're gonna go to file, and we're gonna go to import. We're gonna import, go into our folder, and we're gonna import the MOV file, which is the raw file that we're gonna play with. Now you don't import the project itself because that's what this is. You can't import a project into itself. So don't try to do that. So I press import and there it is. All right, now, what if I put this on the timeline? Okay, now it says change sequence settings. So whenever you see that, you want your settings in the timeline or the sequence, whatever you want to call it. You want always your clips that you're editing in there to match the timeline settings. So if you press change, you're gonna see there's your little bumpy little audio track right there. You see all the little sounds correspond to all the little peaks and valleys there. And this upper of the solid light blue is your video, all right? And I'll explain that a little bit more in detail in a minute. So for now, I wanna show you what happens. So this is a mistake that people make all the time. So I'm gonna be careless on purpose. Let's see if I can do this and do a mistake on purpose. I'm gonna move this out of my folder. So this is the root clip of the clip that we imported into the program. Now, just what I want it to happen. This is what happens when your Premiere Pro application cannot find the footage that was moved. I moved it outside the folder where it knew it was. So if this happens to you, do not panic, okay? Just find your clip and reconnect with it. Now, if you have bunches of clips, like hundreds of clips would sometimes happen, that may not work, but um, let's, um, I'm gonna put this back into the folder and we're gonna right click on any, e either of the red uh, highlights and we're gonna go to link media. We're linking it up. We're gonna link it up back with the project. And now if I click okay, it's back to normal, okay? So that's a very, very common thing and you will not appreciate that until you have maybe hundreds of clips to work with and somehow one of them gets misplaced or moved even very close to where it had been and you'll find that happens and you'll think that you lost your project, but all you gotta do is find it and link the media and it'll be fine. Now what sometimes happens is people will link, relink to the wrong media and that'll really mess things up. So the thing to do when you come into a situation like that would be to go Command Z 
to go back a step as if you never did it before. It's as simple as that. So as long as you're aware of it, um, hopefully that won't happen to you, okay? So we're gonna delete this, all right? And we're gonna double click this and the project allegedly unedited, we'll call it unedited even though it's already edited, is in this place, all right? So let's say we wanted to make a highlight reel of this project, okay, which is already edited. We're cutting it down from maybe five minutes to 30 seconds or whatever, all right? So this thing that I'm playing with here is called the player head. So you can move your mouse up and down the player head and pinpoint any frame that you want to pinpoint. All right, uh, now here are the controls. So if I press the space bar, I'm going forward. If I press the space bar again, I'm pausing. If I press the L, I'm playing again, but if I press the L again, it's gonna go faster. If I press it still again, it's gonna go even faster. Press it a bunch of times, and you'll move your play ahead to the other side. If I wanna stop at any point, pause at any point, Again, I press the space bar. If I want to go backwards, I press the letter J. This is backwards at normal speed. Press it again, faster. Press it again, faster. Press it a bunch of times, and it's a speed demon. Okay. All right, so now you know how to pinpoint any spot that you want on here. I like this. That's a nice little pan right here. Let's say we want this pan this is of the auditorium. You will be here many times right. during the year. So we're gonna go back to the beginning of the shot. Now there are a series of arrows uh, where you can move frame by frame. Uh, you can reach it with your right hand. So I'm moving, right now I'm moving a frame at a time. And <laughs> Hold my finger down on the right arrow, and it's going to go into the sign, and then let's press L. Here's the there's what there's a the shot I want. All right, and we're going to get the last possible frame, or actually the first frame. So it goes from this, and it cuts to this. This is the the very first frame of that shot. So this is the spot where I want my first edit point to be. This is where I'm telling the program, Premiere Pro, I want this shot, I want the beginning of this shot. So now I'm gonna press the letter I for my endpoint. And now I can, I know if I play at normal speed, I'll see story. the shot go by. You will be here many times She's narrating. Video. We're gonna cut the narration yeah, out actually. And we're gonna, we went to the end. So now we're back again with your little arrow, the left arrow, we want to stop right before that, right there. And now we're pressing the letter O. So the letter I is the beginning of what you want your edit to be. The letter O ends it. And now I'm ready to put this in my timeline. So I grab from the middle, I press my mouse and you see a little fist in there. And there's the clip. Now, here's another mistake that people do. They'll be careless and they'll separate their clips. Um, your video is like way up high and your audio is way low, all right? Now it'll still play and it'll still function better. But again, being organized is very important. You want your main clips to be together like that, all right? Now, another thing is when you're editing, you want to start your edit by putting the clip at the very beginning of the timeline. Why? Because with my player head, I can time from the beginning. I know that in this spot that I just rested my player head, we are six seconds and 24 frames into the video. If I just put it over here, I'm not going to be able to, I don't know where the heck I am. Okay, so get into the habit of doing that. 
Now, if you edit the main body of a video and then later on you want to make a, an opening for it, like a theme song and the title, but you don't want to put it over this shot, all you have to do is everything that you've edited, just move it over again, put your opening there, and then we'll put it back. All right. All right. Next thing we're going to do, we'll put this back to there. We're going to pick another shot. Let's see what else do I want. Got a lot of good cutaways there. Again, this is a finished video that I'm editing from, so it's a little bit different. And now you'll be meeting our So we're gonna go again backwards. And we're gonna press the letter I. Now you'll be meeting our lovely kindergarten staff. And we're gonna press the letter O. So there's my second edit. Now you get two clips, all right? Now, in other editing programs, I used to use Final Cut Pro. They didn't have this feature. This feature is really cool because it prevents you from making mistakes. Sometimes sloppiness can happen. If I try to move this as I do want it to be next to this, I might overshoot that, okay? And if I overshoot that, I am cutting off the beginning and the I'm end. I'm cutting off the beginning of one clip and cutting the end off of another clip. So I'm going to undo that by pressing Command Z. Instead, I'm going to press Ripple Delete, and which we don't we didn't have this on uh, Final Cut Pro uh, unless I didn't know about it. Uh, if I press Ripple Delete, it'll push things together perfectly, so the end of one thing will match the beginning of the other. All right, so now I, I did that because I wasn't listening to what she's saying because I'm not really going to use this audio anyway. All right, so if I wanted the end of what she said, again, I could drag this over here or I could undo that and separate them. So we're going to make this a little longer. Now, if you, if you change your mind about a clip and you want to lengthen it, you can stretch it out like this. Our school-wide assemblies. So right when she said assembly, it goes into the special effect. Again, that wouldn't happen because uh, if it was raw footage. So we're gonna go back here and we're gonna shorten, we can shorten this clip like that too, if we wanted to, all right? So. And we can cut this off like that, shorten it. Do ripple delete again, do that. All right, so we'll do a couple of more edits. Now, once you've mastered in point, out point, and all that stuff, you can do it pretty much almost unconsciously. So I'm just gonna put a couple more clips in here. All right, and I'm just doing this randomly now. A library. This is a library. So this is enough for just a sample. So again, we're going to do ripple delete. And right here. All right. So now we've got four clips and we don't want the audio for those clips so we're gonna lock the track so the video is not disturbed and we're gonna delete these audio tracks all right now we're gonna go into youtube studio and just pick some music and let's see Go to YouTube Studio. YouTube Studio has video that is, or audio, I should say, that is copyright free. So we're going to go to Audio Library. And we're not going to waste time now. You know, this can take a long time to pick the appropriate song when you're doing a real project, but this is only a sample thing. 
So we're gonna go into stay away. Let's see what that says. That's kind of intense, huh? Uh, let's look for let's look for uh, a different kind of mood, a calm mood. I like calm moods in the morning here. So these are all calm moods. All right, let's say we're going to use that. We go over here and we're going to press download. And here it is in the bottom. So once it's downloaded, which takes a second there, as you see, we're going to put it on the desktop. And again, we're not going to leave it there. Where are we going to put it? We're going to put it in the folder that the rest of our project is in. All right, and then we're going to import that into the program. There it is. All right, so now an audio clip, I'm going to double click it and you'll see that in the viewer. Those are all the waves that make the audio clip. Now the audio clip doesn't behave quite the same way as a video clip. The audio clip, I'm just going to use a little bit of it. Let's see. I'm going to play it. I'm just going to lower that so you can still hear me. And let's just say we'll start there. So our endpoint will be there. That's done the same way. And we're going to just do a little bit of it, just a tiny bit right there, and put the O. Now, we cannot drag the audio clip from the viewer. If we tried to do that, we're going to mess it up. But what you can do, we put the in point and the out point. The actual clip is here. I can drag it from here. And there it is with its in point and out point. And I can stretch that to however long I need it. All right. And now I, I can unlock my, my uh, audio track, my video track. I'm going to stretch this down so I can see what I'm doing. Now let's say I want to fade the sound in. All right. I go to this little tool thing and I press the pen tool and I'm going to put these little points. Now these points will allow us to drag the sound either up or down manually. You have a lot of control and you can even move these points. And let's see, I don't want it to be too loud. This is like one of three or four ways that you can manipulate your audio. All right, so we're gonna go like that. Now let's see how it sounds. I'm gonna put the volume up here on the computer. fade so what's missing here what's missing here is a finished view if this was a finished video so to do that and everybody forgets this for some reason when they first learn how to edit we're gonna go into video transitions and we're gonna go to dissolve and dip to black so at the beginning if I put dip to black I just dragged it there I just missed there it is dip to black so now when we bring it to the beginning and the music fades up, we'll just fade it up a little stronger. It'll fade up visually as well. And we're gonna do that to the same thing to the end. All right, so when it fades, all right, so audio fades with video, everything is in sync. Now there's one more thing I wanna teach you guys and that is how to put a, a graphic in, how to put um, words on the screen, lower thirds, titles, all that stuff. So there's two ways to do it. The first way is the way that Premiere Pro kind of wants you to do it now because this is an innovation like maybe only three uh, versions back. I just press this letter, the type tool, and if I press the button over here, a cursor comes up. 
So let's like write the word auditorium. All right, now I write the word auditorium and I don't want it to be there. I want it to be maybe centered or I want it to be a different size. There's all kinds of stuff you can do to it. So what you have to do, first of all, we're gonna highlight what we just did to make sure that it knows, that the program knows that we wanna play with this. We're gonna go into effects controls. Now you'll see a little eye here that says auditorium. That's how I know that the controls over here are what gonna, they're gonna make me able to manipulate this. So if I click this little arrow, a whole set of tools appears down here. I can center it. I can put it to the left or the right. All right, now, just because I typed it in an odd spot, it's not centering properly, okay? So what I can do, again, one of like three or four ways you can do this. If I change this back to an arrow, this thing appears, if I grab it from the middle, now I can put this anywhere I want. All right, I can make it bigger, all right? I can go back over here, I can change the font. Let's see if this works. Yes, it works not only with the arrow, but with what not only with the letter, but with the arrow, you can change that. Palatino, which is pretty much like Times New Roman. Now, other stuff I wanna to do to this, um, I can change the color of the letters by pressing fill. Again, I gotta be in the right thing. Now, what, what messes people up all the time, if, um, if we scroll down, wait a minute, I'm gonna get, get rid, rid of that. Let's make this red. So I go down to these other controls for other stuff. You can be playing with controls until the cows come home, but it won't be for this particular graphic. That's what messes people up. And I'm gonna undo that because I like white better. And just to show you, we're gonna put a background in. So a background for these letters would make it show up under certain conditions. You can see that little highlight there. All right, we don't really need it there. Shadow is always kind of nice to do. Shadow gives it sort of like a 3D look. All right, and is you can play with this like, all you want and um, I can increase the size like that without bothering to put the number next to the font all right that's one way to do it that's one way to do graphics so we're going to go to another part of this video and we're gonna I'm gonna show you the other way now the other way is we're gonna go new and legacy title now legacy title is the original way that Premiere Pro wanted you to do titles. This special graphics window would appear. We're gonna make it big, just so we can see what we're doing. And again, it's got the same kind of interface, but only it's kind of separated. So we're gonna put um, Lady with Heart. And again, we go back to the arrow and we can move this the same way. A lot of this is the same, like I said, the same controls, but there's something that this can do that the other things can't do. We're gonna put this back to normal with um, Command Z. Down here, if you're really, really in a hurry, there's some finished letters that you can put there instead of the ones that you typed, okay? And again, you have all kinds of abilities to change the colors, to put shadows, all right? So, and you gotta be aware of, if you're gonna use certain colors, it depends what your background is. If your background is light, um, you, you, if it's white, for example, you can put black. If it's this color here, obviously dark blue doesn't work well with that, all right? Now, what do you do when you're done with this? Let's say that we're done with this. Um, there is my title. I can now drag this. It's just an extra step. And I put it there. Okay. Um, one more thing before we stop because I'm running out of time here. Um, video transitions can be used with 
your graphics, um, when you have a lower third, which I'll explain in another tutorial here, um, I'm going to put this at the end, this slide at the beginning and at the end. And if I play that through, I'm coming in with it and I am going out with it. Now, going out with it was kind of boring compared to this. The traditional thing to do is double click right here and press reverse. Hold on. Reverse. And now, when the graphic comes in, it'll go out the same way it came in. And it didn't work because it unchecked itself. Here we go. Now it went back out. So that's a real, real quick, quick um, way of me showing you guys um, how basic editing works. I think we covered a lot. Uh, the beauty of these videos is if you get stuck, you can go back and watch them and watch just that part that you didn't understand and you'll be golden. So thank you for listening and that's it.